Thank you for um, coming back with um, our service. For those who kind of uh, joined us later, we want to say thank you for joining us this morning. For those who actually could join us later, but uh, could join us earlier, but they join us later, we also will say welcome to you too. So I know some of you couldn't make it, but I know some of you maybe you could make it, but you didn't want to make it. But anyway, it's important you, are, you made it. You made it, and that's the most important part. So thank you for tuning in. Make sure you, you share. If you're watching through social media, you share this with your friends so they can watch us. They can also be blessed uh, through this service in, in Jesus' name. This morning we have a, a guest speaker, a good friend of ours, uh, uh, and he's part of church, Life Church in Bedworth. He's been with us for a, a couple of years now, trying to help us, to guide us, to challenge us for moving forward. So uh, we have Chris Priest. Chris, if you want to come, and we want to say thank you for, uh, for the opportunity to, to come this morning and share God's with us and challenge us. And, and we are looking forward you know, to see what God, God has for us through you. you know? awesome. I know God is speaking through you a lot. He spoke to you. To us, through you, so many ways, through worship, through my personal life, but also to the life of the church. So we are so thrilled and honored to have you this morning. So thank you very much. Very good. God bless you. And, and let's preach the word to God. God's word. Amen. 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 Thank you, Emil. Morning, everyone. It's uh, really, really good to be here. Um, although I know it's not ideal, um, I think the new definition of madness is preaching to an empty church. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> So I never thought I would really be here, but it's, it's you know, what a great time of worship, eh? Guys, you did an amazing job. Uh, really, really good. Um, and, um, you know, we really trust that you at home, uh, wherever you're watching, whether you're online, in your home, in, maybe in the office, at work, abroad, wherever you are, we trust that God is speaking to you this morning and that you are uh, feeling uh, well in his presence. Um, I just want to say, uh, before I get into... The word uh, this morning that you know we um, we're just so glad we're so privileged that we can just come aren't we that we can we can still come to a to a building uh, and and just to, just to worship God and and for the technology that we we have and we we're all kind of living our lives online at the moment and uh, I think 12 months ago nobody ever heard of zoom um, and uh, now it's become a part of our everyday life um, I seem to kind of spend most of my day on teams or zoom or uh, FaceTime, and, um, but it's just be great, great to be connected. Um, and what a great season that you guys are in as a church. Like, I, I came in this morning and the whole stage has been changed and it looks brilliant and, um, you know, the building looks great and uh, you've got a new name and new vision and new beginnings. And uh, so I'm really, really excited uh, this morning and privileged to be uh, kind of speaking to you this morning about, about that. And... Um, you know, I've, um, I, I was, as I was reflecting about all the things that the church has been through and, and all the things that this, this church has achieved over the so many years that it has been around, um, I'm just really, really thankful that this is a, a light in this community. I don't know about you, I'd, I'm, just re- I'm so excited for this new, for this new vision. And, um, you know, I don't know if you've, if you've read the new vision brochure yet. Um, I've got my own copy, so uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, welcome to Connection Church, uh, if you've not seen this before, um, but uh, really, really pleased that this is just, uh, I mean, this is just an amazing, amazing brochure, so please grab one of these uh, and get into it, get, get this in your heart, get this in your spirit, because this is going to change the way this church is going to operate, and uh, I'm really, really excited uh, about this vision. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But um, what, can we just make a little promise just before we get started? Let's just, let's just agree that our future is bright within Kingshurst. I mean, our future is just phenomenal. And, um, you know, why don't you just turn the person next to you at home on the sofa, give them a nudge, wake them up, and just say, our future is bright. Our future is bright. Amen. Amen. You know, I, uh, when I was a kid, I used to love, uh, we, we were, every Saturday we were at my uh, grandparents' house, and uh, we, uh, Saturday afternoon was a whole traditional schedule, and um, it was uh, wrestling first, uh, and then it was the A-team. And um, Saturday afternoon, it was all about wrestling, the A-team, and then there was something else after which I can't quite remember. Um, but uh, for the, the millennials out there, for the uninitiated, the A-team was uh, a program, a series about a bunch of soldiers 
um, who had been sort of extradited from the army for a, a, a false crime. And they'd escaped from jail. They came together and uh, they would just go around the place just helping people escape from the bad guys. And there was always a part in the A-team where they would have to build something out of nothing. And that, you know, all of a sudden there'd appear a tank and a, a whole army of people and a whole army of, you know, um, of, of explosives and guns and weapons and, and they would defeat the army and um, defeat the enemy. And, and one of my favourite sayings, one of the, the, the kind of the colonel of the group uh, called Hannibal, um, not Lecter, just Hannibal, um, he, he had this great saying and he says this, he said, I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. And I don't know about you, but I'm just so glad that I've got a God who has a plan. I've got a God that has a plan to prosper me and not to harm me, to give me a future and a hope. And this is for this church, Connection Church, you have a future. You have a bright, shining, vibrant future. And God has a plan for this house. And I really want to speak into that a little bit this morning. I want to just kind of bring us four key postures about how we respond to a, to a vision, to direction, and how, how should we approach uh, our future this morning. So God's plan is for the future. And I just want to just take just two minutes just to honour Emil uh, and Natalie and the leadership team because they've taken time out uh, of their busy, busy schedule. Um, and they have met with God. They have sought after God. And I know you've just been through a, a time of fasting and praying and uh, it's probably been a bit diff more difficult for some. Um, I've been a, on a, a seafood diet, as you can see, through lockdown. Um, but, you know, this, 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 this whole time where Pastor Emil has been and met with God and the leadership and they brought this new vision, um, I'm just so, so thankful for them because, you know, not many people uh, would understand the importance of vision and direction. And, um, and, and this, this, whole, this whole thing is just... Just amazing, and I'm, I'm going to get into that, as I said, later on. But so, uh, just want to thank you, Emil, just for, just for seeking God and just for having that tenacity in the leadership team. Um, it, I, it's just going to be just phenomenal, I'm sure. You can tell I'm excited. I hope you're excited about your new future. Um, I love the name as well, by the way. That's really, really good. Um, so, my first point, um, I, I, just, I had a, re a real clear message last night as I was just, just mulling all this over and just really spending time with God as well. Uh, just, just wanting to kind of get some, some key messages. And, and this was just a clear bolt out of the blue for me as I was just worshipping last night. And um, I believe God has just sent me just to say this message that your past has not defined your future. Your past, King's Earth Evangelical Church, has not defined Connections Church future. And, um, you know, we hear that all the time, don't we? We hear... We hear people say that about our own life, about our personal life, about the stuff that we've gone through, the stuff that we go through at work with family, and don't let your past define you. But I want to say to you this morning that your past has not defined your future. And um, I'm really, really excited. I I'm hope you can see that. Uh, but how should we respond? I mean, um, maybe we just, we kind of, we've gone through this season, we don't really know why we're, we're starving ourselves with food and we're, we're having to go to prayer meetings. I mean, who wants to do that? With no food in our belly, who wants to go to a prayer meeting? You know, and, and we're kind of looking, oh yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, it's really nice and glossy and it's, you know, we've probably spent a fortune on this, printing all this stuff. But, no, um, you know, is that, is that how we should respond? I mean, that, that word nice, are just, oh, it's one of my hate words, nice. It's not even a good word, is it? Nice. It, this is not nice. Let me tell you, this is not nice. This is not pretty. This is a groundbreaking, hopeful vision that is going to transform this community. And this isn't uh, something that we should be playing with. This isn't sh something that we can shy away from, but something that we need to get beyond. This is God's direction and path for this next season for Connection Church. And I'm really, really excited and pleased that that has come about. I don't know about you are, but hopefully somebody will shout amen through the screen. Um, <laughs> And if you've seen me before, if you've heard me before, um, you'll know that I love encouragement. So there's about five or six people, maybe a little bit more. Um, but, uh, you know, if I say anything remotely biblical, please just shout at the screen and just give me a bit of encouragement. That would be great. So how many of you know that without vision and direction, we're just like a wandering around, we're just kind of aimlessly wandering, headless chicken springs to mind. Um, there's so many people that I know about that have no direction in their life. 
There, there's so many people that just don't have any vision. They don't know where God's leading them. They don't know what God's saying. They don't know what their purpose in life is. And they're just wandering around aimlessly, going to work, uh, getting up, you know, going to work, going on Zoom, going, doing this, that, and the other, go do the shopping and come home, watch TV. And uh, I mean, there's not a lot on TV, is there, to be fair, in the minute. Um, but it's, it's, just, it's just aimlessly wandering around without any vision and without any purpose. And um, I was reminded the other day, uh, I, I was going uh, before lockdown, slight like caveat, um, before lockdown, I was he- heading out um, to, to a new place uh, to go fishing. And um, I, I had no clue, this is a new venue for me, and um, my sat-nav didn't recognise this postcode. And so I'm driving around early doors in the morning, and um, I basically had to kind of fumble my way through uh, the, the, the country lanes to find out where this place was, where I needed to get to. And, you know, that, that's, I relied on that sat-nav. I relied on those directions to get me to that place. And even when uh, it, it kind of failed and it sort of started jittering around and it started, it was a new postcode and it was just, it didn't really understand what I was asking it to do, I was still able to get there, um, thankfully, uh, on time. Um, but, you know, w- without, without direction, we're just kind of wandering around. And I know there's a few people in this church that have got a real bad sense of direction and we all need sat-nav, don't we? We all need somebody with a map. In, in our driver's seat that's going to di- guide us and direct us and um, I'm really really pleased that, uh, that God is directing this church um, the purpose of bringing vision you know is to communicate God's plan the purpose of bringing direction so that we know where we're going so that we know what we're going to be doing so that we can get involved in the life of the church so that we can really passionately get behind the leadership team behind the pastors and just go hey yeah we're in we're on board and we're going and we're supporting and we love this church. We love this community. And we really want to get behind this this morning. So um, just um, the first point that I just want to make sure that he's, uh, he's really feeling at home. So what makes us feel at home? What makes us feel, um, you know, homely? What, we go to our, back to our own houses uh, today. You guys online are already probably sat there in your PJs with a cup of coffee and doing the ironing or doing the washing, cutting the dinner and the roast is on and, and uh, you know, you, you feel at home. But what makes us feel at home? I wonder, is it, you know, is it the heat? I know there's probably been a few marriages like mine through lockdown that have come close because there's been arguments over the thermostat. I mean, you could cook an egg on every single surface in my house. Let me tell you, it's absolutely roasting. And, um, you know, is it, is it warmth? Is it that security? Maybe it's family. Maybe it's a connection with, with, with another member of your family or your friends. Maybe it's that, just that secure place that you know that you can get in through the door, kick your shoes off, put your slacks on, watch Strictly or whatever your guilty pleasure is or whatever rubbish TV. I know, sorry, that's not, I'm going to get shut down by the mother in law. But, but what, what is it? Is it that it makes us feel at home? Is it something that, where that we can just be ourselves? I know that um, there's a few, I know a few people, including myself, that um, you, know, you might class them as really, really house proud and um, that uh, you know, they, they love their homes. In These are the kind of people that you go to and their homes are like, absolutely immaculate. Like, they have got amazing furniture, the, like, the decor is just of, like, something out of a catalogue. Um, and, you know, every surface is clean, it's plush, it's like the straight lines in the garden, there's like, you know, there's not a mark on the walls, there's not a chip in any woodwork, there's no damage to the skirting boards like there is in my house because of two boys, um, not that I'm guilty about or, or, you know, disheartened about that, but, you know, these people are so house pro because they love their home. And I want to ask you this morning, what is it that makes you feel at home? Are we house proud about God's house? Are we house proud about this building? Because this is God's house, right? This is God's build. This is God's church. And thankfully, we serve a God that isn't limited to just four walls in a building. We thankfully serve a God that isn't limited to just online. But we serve a God that is absolutely omnipresent, that is wanting to be in every part of our lives. And he wants to be in this house. But are we house proud this morning? Are we proud to be in this place, in this build? Are we, are we looking to take responsibility this morning for this, for this building? And um, every week, I just thank God for my church, Life Church. Uh, Danny and Naomi send their, their love. Um, and um, Life Church is just, we are 
in a real season, as is everybody else, of trying to find our way through new vision. Uh, we've, um, Danny and Naomi have been here now two years, believe it or not, and they brought some, some great new vision as well. And we're just in that, that new transition period of exploring what that really means for us as a, as a, as a, a called group of believers. But every, every week, I just thank God for that building, for that church, for the people inside that church, because I am just so proud. I'm not proud from a worldly, but I, am a, I have a spiritual proudness that I'm just like thankful to God for belonging to such an amazing house, for such an amazing, phenomenal group of people. And I want to just ask you this morning, what, are, you, are you guys, are you proud of this house? Are you taking ownership of this house? So the first point, is a posture of ownership. Psalm 84 says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. Verse 4 says, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. And I just, you know, I love just to be in the build. Everybody loves, don't we? We love to be the gathered church on a Sunday. And when we don't, when we can't meet together, like this morning, and it really kind of knocks us about, and we, we kind of find ourselves just thinking about, what is it that what is in our core? What is it that we believe? Because we can't we can't gather, we can't go and see people. And it challenges our relationship with God and with each other. But I'm just so thankful that we can we have a dwelling place, that the Lord can dwell in our homes. I wonder if he's dwelling in your house this morning. I wonder if if it is a, a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit to come, for the Holy Spirit to move and just to, to be in power through those four walls that you have the privilege of calling your home this morning. I remember when I was a, when I was a kid in senior school, juniors as well, and um, you, you'll, you'll hear the kids, the teachers, uh, you wouldn't do that at home, would you? <laughs> Sometimes they probably said, well, yeah, actually, you know, I would. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's some things, there, aren't there, that we, we tend to do at home, and we think perhaps that we should do or we shouldn't do. We're kind of a bit confused about whether we should or shouldn't be doing it elsewhere. And um, I, again, I, just wanna, I was just thinking about what, what is it, the things that I do outside of church on a Sunday? What is it that I do outside of, of God's house that, I, that I'm not doing at home? What is it that I'm not doing Monday to Saturday because I've put my Christian clothes on and I've put my face on? And I'm wearing a mask. I mean, this whole, there's a whole huge preach there, Emil, that you can preach about wearing masks. <laughs> I nearly went there this morning. But, <laughs> but are we going to take, do we take that off on a Monday? Do we, do we just kind of fall down the stairs on a Sunday morning now and just go, oh, you know what? I think I might just have a lie in because, you know, it's locked down and nobody knows actually if I'm online or if I'm in church or not. So I'm just going to skip this Sunday. I wonder if that's, one of our mindset. What do we do in church that we don't do at home? What, what makes our home so pleasing, so homely? And have we got that ownership? Having a posture of ownership gives us responsibility. A posture of ownership just says that, yeah, I'm going to pick up that piece of rubbish off the floor that I've just walked past ten times because nobody else has picked it up. That posture of ownership says that I'm going to look after God's house because I'm going to volunteer uh, to go and do some, some painting, some sprucing, some cleaning, whatever that might be. But I am proud. I am so pleased that I am part of this house. A posture of ownership releases us to, from the physical building but looks at the church inside it. It looks at ownership of the people inside it. It gives us ownership and responsibility for our relationships with each other. It gives us responsibility for our relationship with God. It doesn't just confine us to, that, to those four walls. But are we taking responsibility? With that, that, home, that house proud person that, has, that cleans every five minutes and that every time you go around, you, you, you're afraid of sitting down on a cushion because you're going to dent it or you know, you're afraid of getting muddy shoes in because you don't want to touch anything. You don't want to hardly breathe. And it's like the, uh, Remember the, the, uh, the programme, the comedy... Um, uh, um, <laughs> it's gone out of my head. Um, Hyacinth, what's the name? 
uh, Mrs. Bucket, and uh, people, she invites people around for coffee. And they're afraid to drink out because it's China cups and they're going to make her start. They're gonna, she's going to make them jump and they're going to break and they're going to spill and they just don't want to do anything. They don't want to breathe because they're so nervous about being in that house. I wonder if that's the environment that we're cultivating this morning. Maybe if we take some responsibility for our house, for, the, for, for God's house, that we, we can call on that vision, we can get behind that vision and say, yeah, I'm going to take this, I am so pleased, I'm proud to be a part of this body here in Kingshurst. Because do you know what? There's plenty of people out there that would absolutely love a building and a house like this. And they need to be in a house like this. And so how are we going to be bringing our lives from, from our own home into God's house. How are we projecting God's house this morning? So let's have some ownership. Let's have ownership over each other. Let's have ownership um, over our connectedness, if that's even a word. Connection Church, are you connected? Are you connected with each other? Are you connected with your, with your pastor? Are you connected with your neighbour? Half of us probably don't even know what our neighbour's name is. Now there's a challenge especially through this year there are so many people that are just going alone so many people that are believe it or not are falling away from church because it's gone online and we've taken away the physical reality of a building but how are you connected maybe you know somebody this morning that maybe hasn't logged on and for a while and you, you know you haven't seen them for a while but why don't you just give them a phone call or a text or set, set a zoom call up you know, we can still be operated. We can still have relationship with each other and with God through this period of time, through this lockdown. Because this is a real testing time, folks. This is the time where we stand up for who we are and where we're counted for what we believe. And if we're not on the, bo- on the bus, if we're not on board right now, how are we going to come out? How are we ever going to be going back out? How are we going to reach our community that is dying and hurting? How can we bring in uh, the love of Jesus through into our community and saying, come into this house if we're not even prepared to pick up that bit of rubbish outside of the car park or we don't, we don't really, you know, we come to the bill, we take it for granted, don't we? There's so many churches abroad that don't have that privilege of going to a place of worship because they're, they're ridiculed, they're mocked, they live in fear because of who they believe in. Let's have that ownership of the building of our home, of God's house, this morning. Number two, cultivate healthy relationships. I've already touched on that this morning just, just now. But you know, most of the time, discipleship and growth happens through relationship. Discipleship is not Emil's responsibility. Discipleship isn't the elder's responsibility. Discipleship is our responsibility. Because do you know what? We disciple each other every time we wake up in the morning. I disciple my kids. By, by every example that I set, by every word that I speak, every time I want to throw them out because they've done something to the building, <laughs> I'm demonstrating my discipleship. I'm demonstrating my parenting. But discipleship and relationship has a connectedness together. And we, we have to stay connected. The answer is in the name Connection Church. Such a great name. Connection Church. Are you connected? Who are you connected with this morning? Maybe you've been, you're watching online and you've not been a part of this church. Maybe you just kind of stumbled it over and uh, we, we, you know, I'm sure Pastor Emil, the leaders, will give you a huge welcome. We'd love to hear from you uh, this morning. But do get in touch. Bring, get, get yourself connected. Get yourself connected with a community of believers that are going to transform this, community, this, this area, this town of Kingshurst in Birmingham. God moves through people and it's with each other, with our leaders, through our community around us, that we build with our neighbours, that we build and extend his kingdom. And that's what this is all about. That's what this is about. It's not just about making us, giving us a, a warm, fuzzy feeling. But it's about making our community understand and giving them an example, a lifelong example of the transformational love and the sacrifice that Jesus has made for them. There's so many people still that haven't heard the gospel and it is our job to bring that to them. What does a healthy relationship look like to you? Whether it's with family, work, colleagues, neighbours, we'll never reach our community and build relationship out there if we can't have it in here. 
if we're not connected, maybe in a life group, if we're not connected together as friends, as, as strong relationships, as a congregation, as a, as a gathered people of believers of Jesus, if we're not connected with each other, how can we build a relationship with those out of the, out of that, outside of that door? How are we going to be connected this morning? How can we grow that strong relationship? Well, we've already said it. You're already witnessing it this morning online. You can, tack, you can text you can log online, you can get in front of your laptop, in front of your computer, excuse me. Everyone these days is connected by some form or another. And there is absolutely no excuse to leave anybody out. And, um, you know, the old-fashioned letters. <laughs> I received a letter, a card in the post uh, last week, which just meant so much to me because it was a simple thank you. But it was a handwritten card, and I felt like framing it. I thought, this is going to be worth a fortune. <laughs> This is going to be worth a fortune. A thank you card, handwritten. I'm like, you know, we've lost the art of just, you know, encouraging one another. We've lost the art of connecting with one another. Just, just sending a, a, a bunch of flowers to somebody who's, who's maybe going through it uh, this week or in, during this season. Don't be a person on Sundays who's afraid to take out what they've experienced on a Monday. This isn't the time to play Christian. <laughs> Sundays, now is not the time in the world today we haven't got time to play church. We haven't got time to play, to play God and to put our front on to, you know, to, to, to just to come out of habit and out of, yeah, this is what I've always done for the last 40 odd years, so I'm going to come and I'll, just keep, I'll get that box ticked because I don't want a black mark on my name. But this isn't the time to play church. This is the time to take a stand because we cannot afford to lose anybody. We have to have that integrity to demonstrate life, the life of love that Jesus has called us to. This life of privilege that we have all got. How are we going to be sharing that through relationships? If you're not connected, how are you going to share that? If you can't connect with somebody in this church, how are we going to build relationships with our community? So let's, have, let's cultivate healthy relationships. You know, um, I, we were on holiday a couple of years ago and... Um, I love winding Gemma, my wife, up because she's the kind of person that um, you, she has to have the, the 100% legitimate products, right? So um, I just kind of, you know, give her a bit of a wind up every now and again. We go to a market and there's like thousands and thousands of bags and clothes and they're like better than half price. So I'm going, ah, you know, look, you can have a Michael Kors bag for a tenner. In fact, you can have five of them. And, uh, you know, it looks absolutely like the same. The, 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 the spin image, the, it is that. Look at that. This is a Michael Kors bag. But you look closely, and it says Miguel. <laughs> it doesn't say Michael. It says Michael Dawes on the back of the badge. Or it's, a, it's you know, the stitching's not quite finished off. Or it's just not a legitimate product. And we can spot a fake up from a mile off, can't we? We have to have that legitimate item. And I wonder how many people have spotted the fakeness of church today. Because I know that I've been to church and I've put on a front and I've gone out to work on a Monday and a Tuesday and I've completely forgotten what, everything that I've done and said on a, on a Sunday because I've, I've been afraid, because I've been ashamed. But I wonder if we've been spotted as a fake. I wonder if we're bringing a legitimate response to vision this morning. I wonder if we want that genuine article. It may take us a bit of time in order for that to, to be fulfilled. Let me tell you, this vision isn't a three-month plan. <laughs> this vision is not a two-year plan. Amen? <laughs> this, this is not a quick fix, church. This is something that we give our lives to. This is something that is going to take time to build. But this is a God-sent message a God sent direction in order for him to build his kingdom. No one ever left a church because they were cared and loved for. So who are we caring for? Who are we connecting? How are we doing that one anothering with each other? You know, my, I thank God every day for my life group because our life group is just such a great diverse bunch of people. Um, and uh, we, we meet every week, whether it's two, or two of us, three of us, eight of us, um, albeit again on Zoom, um, but there's a relationship there. 
there's accountability. We, we sharpen each other. The Bible says we sharpen iron, sharpens iron. And we have to be in that, we have to be vulnerable. We have to be in that place where we're willing to give everything for that other person. We give permission for that other person to be sharpening who we are, to be challenging what we're saying, to be challenging our behaviour, to cultivate a healthy relationship. As we grow, as we help the church that is scattered, we would develop even more with the church that is gathered. And praise God, I'm believing uh, even for this December. <laughs> Please, Jesus, let us be together in December. <laughs> let us be together in a few weeks because, do you know what? The church gathered is a healthy place. The church gathered can be equipped. The church gathered can grow. The church gathered can, can, can yes, can come and worship and can bring its sacrifice. But the church gathered comes to be equipped, to be empowered so that we can go out to the scattered so that we can go out and build that relationship, to build that community. You know, we're not in it for what we can get out of it, but we're in it for what we can give to it. We're not in it for what we can do. It's not about us. How many times have we said, it's not about me, Jesus, it's all about you. But I wonder how many times we've actually meant it. I wonder how many times that reality of, it's all about you, Jesus. I wonder how many times that reality really takes hold of our life, really takes hold of our heart, really takes hold of our language, really takes hold of our work, really takes hold of our open door at, 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 at home. It's all about Jesus. You know, the problem with vision, when it's not yours is, it's not yours. <laughs> the problem with vision, when it's not yours is, it's not your idea. It's not my idea. It's not Emil's idea. Although I have wondered a few times, but no. <laughs> It's not Emil's idea, it's God's idea. This is God's given direction for this church. And the sooner that we grab a hold, the sooner that I grab a hold of what God wants for my life, the sooner that I can begin to lay down my own will, my own preferences, my own um, behaviours, of my, my own favourites. The sooner I can lay that down, because that means that we're going we're gonna to bring ourselves, we're going to bring our, our, our laid down life. We're here, holy and available, God, ready to do your will. Ready to do your will. Not mine, but ready to do your will. Because it's God's vision. God's vision for this house is to prosper and not to harm us. To, to bring a hope to the people in our community. The reason why this church was planted here is to save souls. The reason why we are here today, the reason why you're watching online is because you are a believer, you are passionate about Jesus and you want to extend the kingdom of God because we're all called to make disciples. So how are we going to do that? Are we going to cultivate a healthy relationship? All we need to do is say yes. All we need to do is say yes. A posture of ownership, a posture cultivating healthy relationships. Third point, a posture of focus. I, um, I kind of class myself as a bit of an amateur photographer. Love, love photos. I love cameras. I love gadgets. So, uh, you know, a camera is a, is a great gadget to have, right? And um, uh, through this lockdown, I was, I was kind of doing a lot, tons of research, thinking I've got to do some videos. I need to, I need to update some stuff. I'm going to do some blogs and looking at microphones. This whole new world of photography equipment opened up and um, tripods galore, big spotlights and all. Well, 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 you know, what can we choose? What do I, what do I need? And... Um, you know when you, it's so easy nowadays for anybody to take an amazing photo, isn't it? Because we've got such great technology with our phones, iPads, cameras. And when you, when you start looking, when you first open your camera, when you turn your camera on, you turn your phone on, and you, you hold that camera and that phone up to, your, up to the, where you want to take that shot, the first thing that happens is it's all blurred because you can't see what the picture is, right? And then you press the, just press the screen, or you press, press the screen, <laughs> press the button on the screen, you turn the old school, <laughs> the old school, you turn the lens to get that focus, and all of a sudden, that picture comes in to focus. And you can see, you can see what you're aiming at, you can see where you're going, you can see the photograph that you're about to take. I wonder how many times we have to hit 
that focus button. I wonder how many times the church has to hit that focus button because sometimes we get distracted. Sometimes we don't really know what's going on around us. Sometimes we have to go through a lockdown period. Sometimes we have to really focus in and home in on that detail to see and to know what that picture looks like. And that's what this is doing. That's what this is doing. Let's, let's refocus. Let's have a culture where we are able and we're willing and we're giving each other permission to refocus. Let's refocus our lives, refocus our purpose. And I don't mean just for ourselves. I mean, what's our purpose in Jesus? What's God's purpose in this place? How often do we need to hit that focus button? It clears everything up. It gets rid of all the noise. It gets rid of... There is a, there is a, a, a noise function on a lot of cameras because there is something... When you take a picture, you can clear noise up in a picture. And I wonder again how many times I've allowed that noise just to penetrate the God's picture that he's trying to show me. God's direction that he's trying to show me. Where's that focus button? Do we have it to hand? Are we willing to press it and to get that clarity? Not to let our preferences and our opinion sway us from the vision and from the heart that God has given It might be a button that we use often, but that's okay, because we're only human. <laughs> it might be a button that is a big red button that we have to use all the time. But if we give permission, and we cultivate healthy relationship, we have that ownership, and we refocus on what we need to do, and what God is telling us to do as well. Don't be afraid to refocus your priorities, your decisions, your relationships. Some of us try, sometimes we know we, we have to refocus. I'm in a situation at the moment where I'm trying to refocus my, uh, my, my career, my job. And I'm thankful because I can actually spend time refocusing what I believe God is calling me to do. Do I need to refocus on this Lord or do I need to refocus over here? Let's take that time and make sure that we refocus and we get that spiritual guidance. We know the vision. We know the plan. So let's press on with that clear picture in mind. A posture of ownership, a posture of healthy relationships, a posture of focus, and lastly and finally, a posture of obedience. We have to be obedient. We have to be obedient to God because individually and corporately, as we gather, as we bring that obedience, that releases the vision. It releases us to outwork that vision. Just want to share a couple of scriptures uh, with you around this, and then I'm going to just draw it to a close. Matthew uh, chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and belt against the house, yet it did not fall because it had foundations on the rock. This whole chapter, the whole bunch of verses here from 24 right the way through to 29, talks about the disciples being obedient talks about how we're obedient to build that foundation, how we can build on Jesus, how we build our obedience, how we, when we say yes, it releases us with a freedom that we can act in God's will and not in our own preferences. Talks about how obedience brings fulfilment of vision. In order for vision, in order for direction to be fulfilled, in order for me to get to that place where I punch the postcode in, I needed to listen and to obey what those directions were telling me to, to go, where, that, where those directions were telling me to go. I needed to stick my indicators on. I needed to turn left. I needed to turn right. And often vision and planning isn't a straight line from A to B. Sometimes we're going to take a few roads off, a few corners here, a few roundabouts there, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get to that destination. We'll see that vision fulfilled, but we have to be obedient. 
It releases us from striving. It brings contentment because being in his will is the best place that anyone could ever be. Being in his will is the best place that we could ever be. Because I'd rather be in Jesus' will, in God's will, in the Father's will than in my own will. Because I know where that's going to lead. I know where my business will lead if it's just me. If it's just my agenda, I know what's going to happen. Whereas if I'm in the Father's will, then I know where it's going. To, where it's going. I know what the plan is. I know what the vision is. And I know in that obedience that things will happen. Obedience brings freedom. It lets go. It relinquishes control of our lives and allows God to work. I'm not going to sing, let it go. But let it go. <laughs> Just let it go. This isn't our vision. This is God's direction. God's direction. Let it go. Obedience. Obedience is saying yes, even when it doesn't make sense. How many times have we been at a crossroads in our life and God is saying, you need to go here. And we're going, no, no, Lord, you're wrong. It's this way. It's this way. And, and, and you know, gracefully, he may allow us to go that way. And then he brings us back and says, I told you so. Just come this way and let me show you. Just bring your own preferences. Lay down your own behaviour. Lay down your own opinion and just come. Just trust me. Be obedient. Another song there. Trust and obey. <laughs> trust and obey his will and his calling and his direction. It's saying yes even when it doesn't make sense. It's saying yes from the heart when your head is saying no. Obedience is an act of will. It's an act of will and a submission of our heart posture. It's an act of will and a submission of our heart, saying, Jesus, yes, I will obey. I will do whatever you want me to do. Wholeheartedly, 110%, I am sold out for you, Jesus. I am saying yes. I am saying yes to this house, to the calling of this place for such a time as this. I am saying yes. I'm releasing my own ambition. And I'm submitting to your will, Jesus. Small acts of obedience can bring a big breakthrough for someone else. It only takes a small thing for us to do in here for a huge change and a transformation out there. Because when we're here, when we're connected, when all the ducks line up and everything's in a row and we're singing from that sheet, there is huge transformation that he will bring because we're saying yes, because we're stepping into obedience, we're stepping into his will and we're going on into the plan that he has for us. I can see some of you still aren't convinced. Uh, so I'm going to turn to another scripture. And uh, this was really interesting. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And bear in mind, um, I was... This, this, this word, this preach, has been probably at least four weeks that I've been working on this. <clears throat> and... Um, I picked this up last night and I was just re flicking through it in my, my quiet time last night. And I turned to page 10 as I was reading through. And on page 10, there's a scripture from Deuteronomy talking about obedience. And uh, it's a different scripture, but it's the same thing. So Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, says this. If you fully obey the Lord with your, your God and carefully follow all his commands that I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading your needing trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant you the enemies who rise up against you and will be de defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and everything you put into it. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. 
The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God, walk our ways and obey him. If you obey, if we obey, there is blessing on the other side. There is blessing on the other side of our yes this morning. If we say yes to Jesus, if we say yes to his plan, to his vision, there is blessing on the other side. There is blessing on the other side. And in Deuteronomy 11, you can read it here. This is, this is part of that download that Emil and the leadership have had. It talks about obedience. It talks about obeying the calling, obeying his word, and the importance of obeying his word. The Bible says, forget what is behind and press on towards the goal. Press on towards the goal. There's a theme here that God doesn't want us to come into harm. He doesn't want us to be struggle. This should not be a striving exercise. Because when we walk in obedience and we walk in his will, it is so, so easy. So easy. Until we let our own will come into play. <laughs> no eye has seen and no ear has heard what God has prepared for you Connection Church in this season. Nobody has seen because only he knows. So in this great new season, let's get behind the vision. Let's get behind the leadership. Let's get this, this, these words here. Aren't just words that we've printed off. Aren't just words that, that, we've, that Emil and the leadership team have just kind of thought, oh yeah, that, that sounds good, that looks good. These aren't just nice words. These are God-inspired direction for you in this house for such a time as this. As I come into close, I'd love the band just to come up and help me just finish off. When I say get behind, what I mean is let's support one another. Let's cultivate a healthy relationship. Let's take ownership of God's house. Let's be house proud. Let's cultivate a healthy relationship. Let's refocus our lives. Refocus our opportunity. Refocus our relationship because this church is being refocused right now. And there is vision, there is clarity that has been set. And all we have to do is say yes. All we have to do is get on board. As we look ahead to what is coming, let me encourage you today to prayerfully consider what God is asking you to do as part of this gathered body. Prayerfully consider what you can get involved with. There isn't, there isn't a, a single piece of this vision that everyone can't get involved with. There is so much in here. There is no excuse. There is no excuse. We can all have a part to play. You can all have a part to play. And through this season, there's going to be times where we're all called. We're all going to have to muck in. There's going to be times where the church is going to be bursting because of the calling of this vision. Are you ready to be connected this morning? Are you ready, Connection Church, to extend that loving arm, to extend that bridge into that community, to say, hey, welcome home. Welcome to this place. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Share that love and experience. Share that transformational Holy Spirit power that brings about change, that brings about life, that brings about hope. What does this vision and direction mean to you as a church? What does it mean to you as a member of this house? I want to challenge you this morning to prayerfully consider what that means. Because we are, everybody is in this together. And you as a body are in this together. Everybody has a part to play this morning. Let's be obedient. Let's cultivate a healthy relationship. Let's give generously. Let's give generously with our tithe. Let's give generously with our time. Because you know what? Vision needs provision. <laughs> we can't do vision with no money. We can't do vision 
just on our own heat. We enact vision, we act work vision by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the gifts that we bring that He has given us, and by sacrifice that we, we lay down our life. So let's lay that down this morning. Let's make a decision this morning. We give generously. We give with our time, with our tithe, and we come, we bring our servant heart this morning. Let's get involved back, get in behind this vision and this new church, this new name. The old has gone and the new has come. Connection Church, this is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time for this place to begin to transform this community. Now is the time. I'm telling you that God is opening doors right now. God is bringing about change right now in this place. There's going to be doors and there's going to be a season that you never even dreamed of that is going to start coming into fruition because of what God has planned and purpose for you in this place. Your future is bright, Connection Church. Your future is God's plan. Let's not be distracted. Let's stay focused, be obedient and be in His will. In Jesus' name.